Right, let's get on with getting this Mitsubishi project finished. So we're going to get this running, hopefully, in this episode. So we're going to start bolting everything back together. See how clean the engine's looking now in the daytime. Looks really fresh now. The engine's been rebuilt. So we're going to get to getting all the drive shaft system in, all the running gear in, inlet on, everything. Inlet's been painted up, which I'll show you now. So I decided to give the inlet manifold a quick clean up and uh, give it a repaint as well. And you can see it looks better than brand new. Also, we've got the uh, exhaust manifold back. So it's all been welded up inside, you can see. TIG welded, it's been ported back out as well so there's no restrictions in the runner and on the inside because obviously the crack went into the collector itself we've uh, just run a bead of TIG around there so it's been drilled out and repaired properly so that's ready to go back on so now we can get this thing back, bolted back together now we've got all the fluids, picked up all the fluids for the car so we've gone with um, good old Miller's Motorsport oil for the gearbox LS1 as well because we're going to be changing the rear diff oil um, so it's going to be for the gearbox transfer case and rear diff so we've got five litres of that so that should be enough got some uh, mobile one running in oil that's going to be for the engine obviously got a couple of filters um, we've got some Miller's um, antifreeze as well the extended red one and we also got a brand new Mitsubishi um, throttle body gasket because obviously I've took the throttle body off to clean up the manifold and you've got to replace them so I've got a genuine one of them so I'm just getting started on this engine bay now you can see I've started to pop things on you've got the power steering pump on there now um, run all the lines all the pulleys and everything down the side here also put on the uh, tensioner put on the oil pressure sensor as well the thing that we had problem with this housing and I've also got the inlet manifold on you see how clean that's looking so now the manifold's back from being uh, repaired we can finally get this thing bolted back onto the turbo and you can see the turbo's all nice and freshly cleaned some fresh gaskets in there you can see that we've got proper Mitsubishi one so let's get on with that so just got all the turbo bolted together we've got the manifold on now and obviously the dam pipe we've just put some spring washers in as well stainless spring washers this top bolt one as well they've all got spring washers on but um, just about to put on the uh, copper washers on for the water hoses see obviously one goes on the front here one goes on the back um, one thing I noticed these are the old ones that are coming off it but even the old ones there's older older ones behind that as well you can see there that someone didn't remove so we're going to get them off, put some fresh washers on. So I'll just give the fuel rail a quick clean up. Obviously we're running an external fuel pressure regulator on this. So that's why we've got the outlets on each end with the AN fittings. And you can also see because you have to fit these 1000cc uh, ID injectors, obviously you're going to replace these seals as well. You've got the little top hats on the top and then you have to run a spacer in between the rail just to push it off the inlet manifold. So the engine bay is coming together now, looking more and more complete. As you see that the turbo's on there finally. Um, just stuck the radiator in as well now, mounted it on. Um, I've also got the radiator fans on properly because they weren't attached properly and they was tearing up the radiator. You can see the uh, injectors are on now. You can see the spacer here between the fuel rail for these top hats for the 1000cc injectors. So I'm going to go round and start putting all the hose in. So I'm just about to bolt on the oil feed for the turbo. Now on the FP turbos, they recommend not using this oil feed from the head and instead they use the one down here from the oil filter housing so you put an adapter in here and it runs off there now you can see that they uh, also include a filter as well in line with the line as well um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, get this off and clean it out because it's got like a micron filter inside and obviously bearing swirl spin in this oil so I'm going to unbolt this now clean it out you can see how easy this comes apart so I've just cleaned it out inside blown it through with an airline cleaned it out with brake cleaner and it's lucky because there was actually some bearing material in there so as I said previously in another episode there was no way that I was going to be using this oil cooler um, once the bearing is spun on the crank it just fills up this oil cooler with bearing swarf so what I've done is I've gone out and bought a new one so these are Mockle, genuine Mockle oil coolers um, so they're not cheap but they've got the AN fittings on the top and then we can just reuse the AN lines that we took off of the old one so that's what I'm going to get to now this one had seen better days anyway you can see it's a bit dented this oil cooler has been an absolute bitch to get this fitting off now you can see obviously it snapped off I wasn't too worried about it normally I would obviously hold it with a set of uh, spanners but uh, this one is absolutely seized on there. I've had it in the vice, I've heated it up, I've uh, cooled it down, and you can see I've crushed it to pieces trying to get this thing undone. So what should have just been a simple switch over of this fitting like this one was, is turning into a nightmare. Now the car is nearly ready to uh, turn over to get some oil pressure up. This is the progress that I've made on the engine bay since I've tried to get that oil cooler sorted out. I thought I might as well get on with something. So you can see pretty much everything's on there. 
all the uh, wiring looms in, uh, coil packs. I've took the plugs out because I want to turn it over and get oil pressure up without the plugs in, the coil packs on there just to look pretty at the minute. Air filters on, induction kit. You've got the breather system back on there now. All the intercooler piping's on. Um, also, the intercooler's all been fitted. Uh, so we've just got to put oil into the car now and the dam pipe is not on, so we've got to fit that. And everything underneath is all ready to go. Just got to put the boost hose on. Obviously, I ain't put the boost hose on or nothing until the dam pipe's going to be put on. And then got to put the drive shaft in, oil cooler on, and we can turn this thing over, get some oil pressure. So just about to get the dam pipe fitted. And as I said in previous episodes, I like to use the fire ring gaskets for these. This one fits absolutely perfectly. You can see what it is. There's a ring that goes around the gasket inside. And obviously that just keeps the exhaust gases inside. With the cheaper ones, they don't have that. So just make sure you use them. This dam pipe didn't have one and it was blowing badly. I was still having issues with this oil cooler fitting. So I've got the thread out of it now. You can see here, managed to get that out, but it's so badly oxidized inside that there's no way I'm gonna screw that back onto this new oil cooler that I've got. Um, it will just damage these threads up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a new one of these ordered up. So I just gotta do some measuring and see which one this actually is. But the other issue we have just found is that you see that we changed the oil filter housing. And the issue is, I think that we had an Evo 8 oil filter housing, which runs a smaller M16 by 1.5 thread banjo. So you can see that size, which is perfect for the banjo that's on it. But the new one has an M18 by 1.5. But luckily enough, because I, I thought I weren't going to be able to start this up and uh, I was getting annoyed with having to wait for parts over New Year, I've got some old Lambda sensor bungs and they happen to be M18 by 1.5, which is exactly the same thread as we've got. So I'm going to put some copper washers on this and it's going to allow me to get the oil pressure up and start this engine up. Obviously, the oil cool is not needed because we're not going to be running it. We're just going to start the car up, make sure everything's good. And then we're about to get this video out for you guys and then we'll fit the oil cooler at a later stage. Right, so I've just bunged off the oil filter housing now. I've took the plugs out, as you know. Uh, so we're going to get some oil in this thing now. Get this oil pressure up before it's even started. Just unplug the crank sensor as well so we don't get no fuel in, none of the injectors firing. So we've got one fully charged battery, had this on charge all day, just so we've got proper cranking amps for turning this thing over. So let's get this in the boot. Obviously the battery's in the boot on this car. So the final checks, I've just put the plugs back in, all the coils are back in, just gonna wire them up now, put them in. All the vacuum lines are on. Um, just pressurized the fuel pump, all the fuel lines are all sealing. No leaks from any of the joins. Um, got oil pressure now in the head. You can see loads of oil in the head now. So I've just checked all the lines. There's no leaks. Gonna plug the crank sensor back in and we're gonna get this thing started up. So as you just see, there was no spark given to the ECU. So I've just checked all the coils and everything because you can see that these plugs are nasty and they ain't proper connectors. Checked everything over. It turned out to be a crank sensor issue. So we've changed the crank sensor out. Um, we, you know that we put a new one on there. Um, I had to pull all the belts off, all the uh, covers and everything back off and change that crank sensor, but that's done now. So we're gonna get ready to the first firing of the car. So I've just plugged in the laptop so I can check everything over. Everything's reading perfectly. There's no fault codes have turned the engine over. So let's get this thing started. So there we go. I don't know how much you can hear me, but the engine's running. You can hear how quiet it is. Running absolutely mint, so I'm just gonna warm it up now. Let it get off a cold start. Yeah. 
there we go the evo is finally running after all that work and it's sounding absolutely amazing the engine is quiet as a mass um, all you can hear is the twin plate clutch which is exactly how it should be now that the clutch is all rebuilt so i apologize for the uploads um, not been uploading for a while over the christmas new year period it's been really hectic there's also going to be some merch in coming very soon so uh, look out for that and uh, when it is i'll put it up on instagram so go follow me on instagram if you haven't already and you'll get all the up-to-date stories and everything of this engine and this build so now we've got to get on with sorting the fueling out because at the minute it's idling around 12 12.8 afrs which is far too rich cold starts far too rich so going to sort out the ecu now so in the next episode we're going to be trying to drive this car setting the uh, fueling up and getting this thing running mint and then we can go for mapping so if you enjoyed it smash the like button so ignore this terrible steering wheel it's going to be changed out it's absolutely the worst thing on the car as you've seen but i've just been adjusting the fuel in uh, we was in the mid 12s on idle now we've gone to like 13 7 13 8 so i want to get that up to about 14 5 something like that so just messing around with the fuel table at the minute and uh, we get that sorted out and then we can get the cruising sorted out so there's no misfires but this car starts on a button now with no throttle i'll show you how nicely this thing starts up now how smooth it's running. So after a couple more tweaks of the fueling, we're now into the 14s, 14 threes on idle, absolutely spot on. So um, I'm gonna probably leave it as that for now. The idle is absolutely perfect. You can see the revs to keep the oil pressure up just over a thousand RPM. <laughs> 